Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, Benoit Lallier from the University of Lyon. And he'll be talking about, uh, it's not in the title, but he'll be talking about uh, global dynamics uh, for uh, mixing times of, of global dynamics for lozenge tilings. So thank you for the invitation, uh, for the opportunity to talk. Um, yes, title is uh, moving around. Um, so. ah, I have. Um, so what I will be talking about is uh, lozenge tiling or equivalently uh, easing model on uh, Z3 or interface of the easing model on Z3 at zero temperature. So normally everybody in view has seen that this tiling uh, can be seen as a stack of cubes and uh, so it exactly uh, equivalent to uh, the, um, to one configuration of the easing model with uh, boundary conditions that are everything below the curve in Z3 given by the contour uh, is uh, say plus and uh, full cubes and everything above uh, is uh, minus and uh, invisible uh, cube, and we see it from uh, height. Um, because it's convenient to uh, parameterize uh, such uh, tiling uh, by uh, uh, height function, and uh, here we will choose uh, um, uh, to uh, function for each intersection of two lozenges, we will put uh, the z coordinate of um, um, the associated uh, yeah, stack of cube. Um, so just think we could work also on for with uh, other tilings such as domino tilings, and this is how we can see a domino tiling uh, as something uh, in uh, in R three, um, but it's much less clear in the picture. So we'll stick to with uh, lozenges. Uh, um. So we will be interested uh, in um, the asymptotic uh, behavior for very large domain when um, this uh, height on the boundary um, um, converge to uh, some uh, fixed curve in uh, R3 and can consider that uh, the size of uh, the cubes uh, goes as uh, 1 over L. Um, and as you see in the picture, you have uh, quite a rich uh, behavior, uh, uh, which you know, of course, uh, very, uh, very well. Um, of, uh, for the typical configuration, so um, um, it can have uh, places like uh, this one or um, <laughs> no, um, one in the middle is, I think, Rick Kenyon's. Yes, this one is uh, Rick Kenyon's uh, in his paper with uh, uh, Okunkov. This one, I don't remember which <laughs> paper it is. Um, That's important. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mm 
uh, yeah, so you have a region where uh, all the hinges are aligned, which we will call frozen region, and this will be important uh, uh, afterwards. And uh, region uh, in the middle uh, where um, you see some random configuration that will be called uh, liquid region. And um, um, yeah, we have a uh, law of large numbers, this a typical tiling uh, um, converges to some uh, deterministic height function depending only on the boundary. Uh, and one important special case is when the boundary is uh, contained uh, into uh, some plane, uh, and then uh, the asymptotic uh, height function is planar. Um, so now what we have uh, looked at is the global dynamics on uh, these uh, tilings. So um, a the, uh, we make move consisting of adding or removing just uh, one cube uh, from, uh, from the stack. So going from something on the left, uh, the, the equivalent in, on the right there. Um, so if we, in terms of dimers, uh, but it's, going to be, it's rotating three dimers uh, uh, around uh, one face. And uh, um, the time scale we consider is that um, every phase, so every intersection has a rate one uh, clock. And uh, so in, a, in one unit time, uh, you have uh, order uh, L square uh, moves. Um, yeah. And for this, um, Shane, our main um, results are uh, um, the following. Uh, so, um, let um, say gamma be a boundary curve. Uh, such that uh, H uh, infinity, the uh, deterministic limit uh, thing height function, uh, has uh, no frozen uh, region. So it's only, it's liquid everywhere. Um, then, um, um, with high probability, um, if we consider um, H uh, L at, at time uh, t two plus four ellipsis, so if we can consider uh, the height function um, uh, with a scale uh, L and at a time uh, L square up to uh, a small error term, uh, then it's macroscopically speaking uh, very close to uh, the equilibrium shape. Uh, note that here this epsi epsilon is um, I mean, you still need epsilon times L uh, uh, cubed to um, you allow macroscopic uh, change, but uh, so this um, and um, another result is. Um, if um, gamma is, uh, let's say, cut f 
from um, uh, an hexagonal uh, H infinity, then uh, the mixing time, this time is uh, uh, equals. Uh, So what do I mean as a cut from uh, the um, an hexagonal H infinity? You consider this uh, big um, hexagon, and uh, you draw a curve inside the liquid phase. Um, and actually, you need. Uh, yeah, you don't. You are not allowed to go up to the boundary of the liquid phase. You have to stay strictly inside. Uh, then this gives you a curve in the R three, which you can use as boundary condition. And for these boundary conditions, uh, we have um, uh, really uh, mixing time. Um, this is not exactly mixing time. This is some convergence. Interface, but um, the first is not really a mixing time. The second is really the mixing time for uh, Lozen Steining, so you with the variation distance. And yes, the first one is much weaker because you have no information on uh, uh, local structure. Or weaker in a way, but it's not that it is implied by the second. I mean, there is um, more in the sec in the first. You also have some concentration information about the stationary distribution that's concentrated near. Yes, but this information about the stationary distribution it's uh, well known uh, since uh, actually props and uh, some results. Uh, so. I have a question about the first theorem. Yes. So, if there is a frozen region. Then what do we know? It seems like it should be all the more true. Um, if there is a frozen region, we the best uh, results uh, are, I think, L six to the six. Or we know that it's polynomial, and but uh, but we don't know um, what happens. I mean, it uh, could be L squared L to the two plus the O one. Right? Yes, we think that it is L to the 2 plus the row of 1. But um, as we'll see, to get this L2, uh, we have to uh, follow and understand quite um, closely um, the, oh, the relation with um, mean curvature motion. And, uh, and if we have frozen region, then uh, a lot of things, uh, the mobility uh, could die, will diverge, uh, uh, surface tension becomes singular, and uh, and we see this problem in the proof. So, um, um, so how does um, we uh, prove this term? Um, we will do uh, a recursion uh, uh, on things that um, will define a deterministic um, um, yeah, deterministic surface that will uh, slowly move uh, towards uh, H infinity and um, iteratively uh, show that we will stay with very high probability below this interface. So it's really um, the same kind of idea as what was done first with, by uh, Fabio, uh, Fabio Martinelli, um, uh, Pietro Caputo, and uh, Francois Simonaus. Um, and yeah, so we show that. Um, but um, the uh, real difference between uh, uh, the 
planar case that they did and the non-planar case is that we have to be more careful in uh, the definition of this uh, evolving uh, interface and uh, we have to use more complicated and uh, fluctuation estimates uh, thing. Um, so I will get so more precisely um, uh, we will define um, here also okay, here. Um, our uh, moving interface. If you want to, you can just say screen up and it will raise like magic. Um, yes, but I have other pictures. Uh, and ask it for to go back to <laughs> yes, I. Can you read if I write a few things here? Yes. Sure. Okay, then I will try to keep it here. And we'll... so, um, this um, CT will be equals to uh, the H infinity. Um, Okay, plus uh, we have epsilon 1 minus uh, t over L2 uh, plus little of 1 and some function uh, uh, psi which give, will give us uh, its overall shape um, and uh, okay, can give that's a large constant uh, minus Okay, um, so we define uh, our uh, shape. It's basically uh, something that will, when t uh, will become of order L2 plus little of 1, it will uh, become very close to uh, h infinity. It, okay, it, it can start at distance 2 epsilon. Uh, because uh, if we know how to go from distance 2 epsilon to distance epsilon, then we just have to do this argument uh, 1 over epsilon time, and since epsilon is constant and we are losing uh, L to the little of 1, which is still diverging, it's not uh, an issue. Um, so, and, yeah, and we will have uh, the following recursion. Um, so uh, for all uh, t greater than, uh, um, so say, um, And L times L and C. Uh, uh, T is lower than C. Uh, So the recursion will be for all t um, uh, bigger than uh, our nth time, uh, we will stay uh, below uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the cap at uh, the nth time. And yes, t also smaller than some very large time to avoid uh, that we just fluctuate back up. And uh, that's with, with high probability. So you're going to prove it by induction on n? Yes, and then we work by induction on n. Um, so here is a schematic picture of what happens at some times. 
we have our uh, CG, which I drew uh, uh, concave, but uh, actually, when we are close, uh, it's not concave anymore. Um, and uh, we consider one point, and we want to lower uh, by one uh, CG um, uh, at this specific point with high enough uh, probability. Um, so we define a small uh, domain uh, D uh, of size uh, more or less square root, one over square root. So you have square root uh, lozenges uh, in um, around uh, P. And um, we look only at what happens uh, inside this uh, small domain. So um, now we can try to draw uh, everything um, on uh, this uh, in a side, yes, in a cross section and side view. Um, so we have um, this domain. C is uh, actually defined something a bit bigger. Uh, R domain D, and um, we. Uh, at this initial time, we know that we are some, uh, somewhere below. And um, um, so the dynamic is monotonous. Um, so we can uh, replace um, uh, HT by some uh, H tilde, which is started back uh, at CT. Uh, but because we are our recurrence uh, hypothesis, uh, which is forbidden to ever uh, move uh, above uh, um, CT, um, then um, um, we can also uh, add some floor uh, not too far uh, below. Um, and we get to, uh, to study this um, H tilde, uh, which li only evolves on uh, domain of size uh, square root, um, and which has a flow and sailing, uh, um, which are actually not very far from each other, because um, here you have a curvature um, which is of order one. When you look at the domain of size uh, minus one half plus some little of one side of D, then um, this distance uh, here is why well, it's a good epsilon. So if D is of size uh, minus one half plus epsilon, this distance here. Uh, because becomes some uh, L to the epsilon uh, over L. Um, so one over L is because of... Um, and we have a first um, uh, key lemma which says that this um, H shield with all its constraints, um, it will... Um, uh, mix in uh, time uh, of order uh, L of order the size of the domain on which it lives uh, squared. Um, so L um, of order L. And another lemma uh, that also said that when it's at equilibrium, it has fluctuations only of order uh, logarithmic. Uh, so it will not fluctuate above uh, um, L to the epsilon minus 1 uh, in a very long time. Um, and then with this Tulema, uh, we can say at time uh, t plus uh, L 
basically t plus l, uh, we will stay below this uh, H tilde at equilibrium. Um, and this H tilde at equilibrium will be below uh, C uh, t plus L. Um, so that's um, the um, basic way the recursion uh, uh, works. Um, so, like I said, yes, we have um, lemma uh, one for uh, um, the dynamics constraint um, um, between So the, so the first lemma uh, it says that this uh, H tilde with its constraint uh, uh, makes in times uh, the size of the domain uh, uh, squared. And uh, lemma two, inside um, um, We have that we can write in a very informal way uh, uh, like that. Um, so um, the proof of this lemma um, for Lozenge uh, tilings, uh, it's uh, actually um, uh, deduced from uh, the work of on David with uh, another dynamics where uh, uh, mixing time uh, L squared was proved uh, for um, uh, with, without any constraints. And um, the constraints allows you to uh, reasonably accurately uh, compare uh, the two mixing times. Uh, and Yes, or and you have also another uh, argument uh, for uh, domino tilings. For Lozenge, you can get a little bit better in the power of H and logs and that, but it doesn't matter. Um, the second lemma was one of the other big uh, improvement uh, with respect to uh, the planar case uh, because um, fluctuation estimates are uh, quite um, difficult to uh, um, the by L to minus one half plus epsilon. So his, his basic tile is size one over L. Yes. Okay. So um, um, so the idea was to uh, use uh, fluctuation estimates on uh, large um, hexagons. Uh, so yeah, it's the same kind of um, uh, picture with that I showed in the in the beginning uh, that were uh, obtained by uh, Petrov uh, um, like two years ago, um, where you do have uh, logarithmic fluctuation for uh, something which is not planar, uh, but it's only for um, uh, hexagons. Fortunately, 
Um, when you look at uh, something of radius uh, square root of L, and then you can uh, do a tailored development of any shape, and you see that the third order would give a contribution uh, L to the minus uh, three, uh, three half, which is smaller than one over L, which is the smallest significant distance. So you can really ignore all higher orders than two. And then you compute the thing and you see that in, uh, you can find somewhere uh, in the hexagon um, any second order Taylor development of, um, of the macroscopic shape. Um, so, and then you, okay, for any small domain, you find uh, a big hexagon, you fit it so that it has uh, the, the proper uh, boundary. Uh, uh, yes, it has the proper boundary. And since you know the fluctuation inside the big domains, you know in particular that you have logarithmic fluctuation uh, inside the smaller one. Uh, and so that's how we get um, um, this uh, lemma two. Um, yes, this is the reason why we have this di discrepancy between the uh, general boundary and really boundary cut from an hexagon. Because if we are cut from an hexagon, we can use uh, hexagonal uh, you can adapt lemma two with bigger domains than L to the minus one half because we are always with domains, um, yeah, hexagonal types. While uh, for general uh, boundaries, we cannot, we are stuck in our recursion um, when, I mean, in our recursion, we are only allowed to look at very small domains and that means we cannot, um, we have to stop uh, when uh, the curvature of uh, CT becomes too small. Um, and, and, the curve, so, and that means we cannot really approach uh, more than at a fixed distance uh, of H infinity. Um, I don't know how much time I have left. I um, okay, then. <laughs> um, then I can say just a word about. Um, I can either speak about uh, lemma uh, one or give a bit more details on the recursion to explain why this particular shape for um, the, the domination city. I don't know what you would uh, prefer. Okay. You can start by maybe give, discussing lemma one just because. Uh, um, without, without the constraints, how you, of the ceiling and the, how you, uh, how you use the ceiling and the... Okay. Um, so, I can, I think I will present um, the proof of uh, lemma one that works um, exactly in the same way for lozenge or for dominoes uh, because uh, for dominoes it wasn't known and for that uh, I think yes I have one picture so, so the, the general idea is to uh, define uh, an auxiliary dynamics uh, for which it will be easy or for which we will 
manage to uh, um, compute the mixing time and then make a comparison uh, between um, these, uh, these two. Um, so for, to define the auxiliary dynamics, um, we consider um, another representation of um, uh, tilings or timers, which uh, is a kind of bead model. I think bead model is primarily for the continuous part of the continuous analog, but it's really it. Um, so definition goes like it. Forget about um, any um, dimer or that um, do not, which is not horizontal. Um, then, um, uh, then you have a configuration and it's actually enough to recover uh, the whole uh, um, dimer uh, because um, yeah, if you have this uh, configuration, um, if you look at these two uh, vertices, um, you know they have to be, and more generally, all the vertices in this, uh, um, in this region, they have to be matched uh, with each other uh, or else, because yeah, you know that they are not matched uh, and there is an even number of it, so you have only one way to represent it. And furthermore, um, the interaction between these beads is uh, quite simple. They have to stay uh, around or organized uh, like in this picture. So um, between two uh, beads uh, on the same um, thread, you have exactly one bead on the right and one bead on the left. And uh, beads are uh, horizontal dimers. Um, okay, this works for um, some uh, hexagonal lattice, but you can also uh, find uh, threads and um, for uh, domino tilings. So this uh, dimer on uh, the square lattice. Um, and then um, the dynamics, uh, the auxiliary, auxiliary dynamics we use is just um, at um, an update is pick either uh, even or odd and um, resample uh, all beads which lie on uh, even or odd uh, threads, because threads are labeled uh, in order, um, conditionally on uh, everything else. So if you take, uh, if this is zero and you pick uh, odd, you will uh, put these two back, uh, this one inside uh, this region, this one inside this region. You will resample also these four etc, etc. Um, so this is uh, an awesome monotonous dynamics. Um, and we can check uh, that uh, for this dynamics, if you look at uh, the volume between uh, two interfaces, so the volume being uh, the sum of the value of the height function on all sides, so, uh, really in the, the volume in R3, um, then it is uh, it is a martingale, or uh, or it tends to decrease, so it's uh, over martingale. I'm not silver martin. Um, so it tends to decrease. Um, then. If we, we can also um, um, know the variance of um, uh, this process. Um, why? Because, um, oh, I, 
don't have this picture here. I can cheat and take um, what they ah. um, so um, to bound the variance, we have to know where are we allowed to make uh, movements. And one place where we are sure we can make movements is when we have, uh, when we could just add the cube um, or remove one. And how do we find some place where we can add a cube? We start from any vet anywhere and um, we try to go away from the board at the maximal possible speed. Uh, then we follow, for example, this, uh, this path. You have a lot more choices. Here you could uh, just uh, keep on, but um, if we, If at some point we are stuck, we are in the local minima, we could add a cube. Um, now, if we are constrained between a floor and a sailing, um, which are quite close, uh, some uh, h over l. Um, then this process um, of uh, moving at the maximal possible speed, it will, um, it has to stop uh, quite quickly, and actually it has to stop in uh, uh, at most uh, a constant time h uh, steps. Uh, because we are moving towards uh, the floor and sailing at the positive speed. Um, yes, yeah, so we have around um, L squared uh, divided by some power of H uh, sites where we can make a move. Um, so the variance should be of order L squared. Um, and uh, we also have, so the volume, it's uh, martingale, or uh, so martingale, which um, has variance L squared, which is positive and uh, has um, a maximum uh, L uh, to the 3. Um, so putting it all together, uh, you get the mixing time for for this uh, for this auxiliary dynamics, and now the comparison is also easy because um, when we moved one bead, um, the set of allowed position was actually made of one pass going up and one pass going down, so it was also of order h. And this means that we can simulate uh, one update of uh, the auxiliary dynamics by uh, freezing everything in, uh, say, the odd uh, threads and letting um, the global dynamics run for h square uh, steps, because in h square steps, each bead will make uh, an yeah, h square move inside be a simple random walk inside some thing of size at most h square. And hey, if we can mimic uh, then again by this Ferris Winkler uh, sensoring it compares the two uh, uh, so to uh, mixing time. So that's um, and that's also gives us uh, uh, a lower bound, uh, yes, um, we can find some uh, conf special uh, boundary condition for which um, the volume drift is lower bounded by something like L and, uh, and then um, um, 
we can uh, additionally these uh, conditions look like big pyramids uh, actually for the um, lozenge case it's just you take uh, hexagonal boundary conditions and um, and now if you want to uh, say that an initial configuration cannot move down too much you fit below uh, some uh, pyramid uh, and you know that the pyramid can uh, erode volume only at speed uh, L, so at times uh, some small constant times L squared. It only has removed the small part and it has not moved uh, too much uh, down, so it, you cannot have converged yet. So it uh, uh, gives a long lower bound constants time L squared a bit better than what uh, um, was known before. And I think this should be it. Uh, I don't much more time. Could you say a few words about uh, showing the fluctuations this lemma too? Um, yes, so um, uh, the Petrov um, computations um, uh, rely on uh, the exact uh, solvability of the model and uh, you you can express uh, exactly uh, with integral uh, the probability that you see one uh, uh, dimer at some point. And um, yes, then you approximate this integral uh, um, and you get the fluctuation in the, uh, inside the big hexagon. Uh, and that's really yeah, not uh, my work. But um, to get um, yes, a fluctuation in a um, small domain, the key point is this uh, bijectivity, actually, between um, uh, points inside the uh, hexagonal boundary conditions and um, uh, order two development of um, some uh, curve. Oh of some interface. Um, and then you have uh, an exact um, formula for uh, the limiting height function inside hexagons. Uh, you can uh, derive it and uh, compute uh, the differential of the application that to some point on some parameter of the hexagon uh, gives uh, the local, the Taylor development at order two at this point. That's some application. Uh, uh, you compute the derivative, you compute its determinant, you see that it's non-zero. So at least locally, um, you have some bijectivity. Uh, and um, then you say that um, Actually, the boundary of the set of uh, points inside uh, some uh, hexagons um, is uh, sent by this application to uh, the boundary of the set of uh, uh, Taylor development, order two, which is basically infinity. Um, and if you have some function which yeah, maps bijectively uh, small open sets to open sets and maps the boundary to the boundary, then it's globally bijective. And, and that's it. So. I noticed one of your slides showed one of Rick Kenyon's kinds of pictures. And I'm just curious what that had to do with your work. OK, that's, that was uh, another tentative to, uh, yes, there. Yeah. So. Uh, to compute uh, fluctuation estimates in uh, 
uh, domains with uh, non-planar boundaries. Um, so to Rick Kenyon has a paper where uh, he showed how to relate the random or harmonic function on these graphs uh, where uh, each um, half edge is oriented uh, away from the point where it um, so harmonic function on these graphs are related to uh, the Castellane matrix and uh, ultimately to uh, the fluctuations of um, uh, the Daimler models. But to get really accurate fluctuation estimates, you have to have um, uh, uh, precise estimates on how do uh, harmonic function on this uh, converge to uh, true uh, continuous harmonic functions. And there's something I, I tried to, to do it and I proved that um, the random walk uh, converged to Brownian motion on uh, this graph, but um, not uh, with accurate uh, enough, or actually not with any speed of convergence that could be used uh, for later. Yeah. Okay, thanks again.